Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Charlie from Raging Entertainment. Today, I wanted to give you my thoughts and opinions on the documentary series that was a two-parter of What Happened, Brittany Murphy. And a lot of you would know Brittany Murphy from movies like Clueless, Eight Mile, Don't Say a Word, Cross the Hall, a lot of movies. She's even um, done a lot of TV as well. She was also a voice character on King of the Hill. I forget her character's name, but she was a voice character on there as well. And the thing is, is that this documentary is showing exactly like what the title says. What happened, Brittany Murphy? Like, what happened to you? What happened? What made you do this? What made you do that? Kind of aspect. And watching the documentary shows the heartbreak you see of Brittany Murphy in a sense, because... And spoilers ahead, if you guys haven't seen it, I want to let you know now. Um, I will be mentioning what they talk about in the documentary, so be aware now. That she basically was raised by a single mom. Her dad wasn't really in her life at all. I think his name was like Angelo or something like that. And, you know, she had been wanting to do, like, acting forever, basically. And from what I understand is that she did do like little plays at school, this and that or whatever. And then she did like some commercials, but then she started to break out into TV roles, did a lot of TV pilots for shows and, sh you know, stuff like that. She was on Boy Meets World at one point. And uh, it's funny because when you see her on Boy Meets World, the way she looks is almost how she looks in the movie Clueless. And it's funny because Clueless happens to be her first breakout role like ever in a movie. It's her like her very first actual mainstream theatrical movie. And I happen to own it, love this movie to death. And I have to admit, she does an amazing job. I mean, they had the director of Clueless on the documentary talking about like how she just had this charisma, how she just played it so natural as to where like all the other people they saw were like, you, you could tell they were just trying to act it, not be it, but just act it, so to speak. And um, one of the greatest delivery lines from the movie, you're just a virgin that can't drive. The way she delivered it. You know, the director said it gave her goosebumps when she did that. And thinking about it now, yeah. She, you know, it was a very powerful punchline, you know, in the movie. But Clueless was one of her breakout roles. And, of course, then she started getting, you know, jobs, uh, you know, elsewhere. Whether it be TV or voiceover work. But, um, I mean, how she even did... Um, a voice character on the movie Happy Feet with Elijah Wood. And she was the love interest penguin. She was the uh, opposite of Elijah Wood's character, you know. And that was a great movie. I, I enjoyed the Happy Feet movies. Um, and may she rest in peace because she was somebody that I really, really enjoyed as well in the film industry. And the documentary, basically, it just kind of talks about how the roles that she ends up getting in these movies are kind of like what Hollywood wants her to be, so to speak. Because, like, when watching Clueless, the part where they say it's time for a makeover, and she's like, no, you know? And they're like, oh, yeah, it'll be fun, this and that or whatever. Um, and it's funny because the director didn't realize it until, of course, like, later on. Like, it's weird how that that role basically showcased how her transformation started happening from since that point. And then you could see it you know, throughout her career. And a lot of people were worried about her. A lot of people were worried about her. I mean, because the only movies I have of hers are Clueless and 8 Mile. You know, and in 8 Mile, she doesn't have her red, vibrant hair anymore. She's gone blonde, this and that. She's really skinny. She's not, like, herself anymore, it seems like. But she does the role so very well. She embraces these characters. Now, the sad part is that, you know, from what I understand, when she did the movie Just Married with Ashton Kutcher, like, after, they actually dated for a little bit, you know, and stuff like that. And they mutually parted ways. It, w it wasn't anything like any animosity towards each other at all, which is good, because Ashton seems like a really good guy. And, you know, I'm happy for him and Mila now that they got their marriage, their kids, their family, stuff like that. But... After that, she had been stringing through different, you know, relationships, and she was so vulnerable at one point to where, what was his name, like Simon uh, Monjack, I think is the last name, I hope I said that right, but um, he basically caught her in a vulnerable stage in her life, and then became like 
the person to talk to, talk to her agent, manager, all of the above. She didn't have any email that you could directly talk to her to. She didn't have a phone you could t directly talk to her to. Like, everything had to go through him. And I thought that was a little weird because me... If I had a successful girlfriend and whatever, or fiance, wife, whatever it may be, I wouldn't be the one deciding her, you know, like films, commercials, whatever she wanted to do. I wouldn't make those choices for her because that would be on her. All I would be there for is support. That's what he should have been was just support alone, not take you know, like take over all of her finances and all that kind of stuff because it turns out that um. The guy had two kids, one from, you know, different women, and he wanted to keep them secrets because, or at least the one that was in the documentary, because uh, they talked about one, but then there was a second one that people did not know about, and people thought it was strange how he was trying to conceal this life about him, and it, honestly, when I was watching it, and the way he looked... It didn't surprise me. It really didn't. Just by looking at the man alone. And sometimes I know you can't judge a book by its cover kind of deal, but sometimes you can. Sometimes you can. And it's kind of like movies, too. You could, you can look at the cover, think, hmm, I might enjoy this movie. But then when you go and watch it, you're like, I didn't really like it so much. But then there's the opposite effect where you're like, hmm, nah, I don't think so. And then people would tell you, oh, it's a good thing you didn't see it because it was horrible. You know, that kind of deal. And that's how I looked at it. And... Simon, to me, was just a creep. I'm sorry to say, but for anybody who is a supporter of Simon this and that, I apologize. It's not to, like, say, bash him so much. It's just more of, like, what I observed watching the documentary. And I gotta say that I was not impressed by his doings to Brittany, you know? And I was actually surprised that Brittany even went for someone like him. He basically turned on his charm, convinced her, convinced her mom, basically to be the one guy that's in charge of everything. And I, it's weird because when she didn't have her dad around, I think she just kind of went with it because, you know, head of the household, you know, the man of the house kind of thing. But, you know, Brittany Murphy was a talent that went to waste, in my opinion, because she was amazing. And I mean amazing. Like, my favorite movie of hers, and I can literally say this, with certainty, my favorite movie of hers out of all the ones that I have per personally seen is Don't Say a Word. I enjoyed the hell out of that movie. It's a, it's a thriller. It's a psychological thriller. It's a great movie, in my opinion. But, of course, second to that would be Clueless, because, of course, that's her breakout role. Then third would be Eight Mile. Eight Mile would be the third, like, favorite of the movies that I've seen of hers. Now, Across the Hall, I didn't get to see that one, but... Just from looking at the trailer itself, it looks really good. I got to check it out. Maybe I'll try to find it on a streaming service or something. But in all honesty, what I thought about this documentary was I felt so bad for Brittany because she dies at 32. I mean, coroner's report says pneumonia. And of course, her dad, Angelo, says she was poisoned. And I'm not going to lie. I kind of tend to believe that she was poisoned in a way. Um, through prescription pills and stuff like that because you could tell she was losing weight drastically. You can tell she was trying to change her image because that's what Hollywood wanted. And it's also what Simon wanted as well. It wasn't just Hollywood. It was also Simon telling her and dictating her life. So it's just very sad because she's a wasted talent, in my opinion. She was a great actress and very underrated, in my opinion, because... If she were alive today, I'm sure she would have gotten some really great roles, you know, some really good films out there. And it's just sad that we'll never get to see that now because dies at a young age, 2009, age of 32. So sad, you know? And, um, yeah, it's just, I mean, it, to me, it was a very important documentary to watch, especially if you're a movie lover, you want to get to know those people behind the camera kind of deal. And you got to... Remember, these are normal people just like you and I, you know, we're believed to, you know, 
we're believed to believe that Hollywood and all these other places know what's right for you when in reality it's like, no, that's what your image is. My image is to be me. And a lot of people have a hard time, who are actors and actresses, have a hard time even saying that to the people above them. Because without them, they have no career, no life, no nothing, can't make no money because Hollywood wants more kind of, kind of thing. And I feel so bad for Britney. And you feel bad for her mom, too, because, you know, she was a single mom. She raised her all on her own. And the fact is, is that when it came down to it, I, I think just stress, you know, of being a single mom, Simon coming in, you know, when they were all vulnerable in a time in their life where she just wasn't doing that well. And yeah, to me, it was almost, and it's weird because Simon died the same way, like five months later, I think it was, or something like that, died the same exact way she did. And that's when people started speculating, like, oh, was it the mold in the house, this and that, or whatever it may be. So, of course, they had the place checked out, whatever it may be. Yeah, there was mold, but with the coroner report, there was no obvious tracings of it. But, uh, I just, I feel so bad for her, and I do wish her well in the afterlife. Rest in peace. We love you dearly to those who are actual fans of yours, me included. I love you personally, because, hell, loved you since Clueless, and... It was funny because after Clueless, that's when I found out she was in Boy Meets World because Boy Meets World was one of my favorite shows growing up. And I didn't realize it, of course, because Boy Meets World had already been out for a while. But um, she was on, I think, the third season playing Topanga's, like, best friend. And she looked the same. She really didn't look any much different. And it's funny how, like, she became the weirdo friend because she's like, it's okay, it's okay, no one gets me, <laughs> you know, and a lot of us can relate to that. But, you know, I just wanted to make a quick video to let you guys know what my what my thoughts were on the documentary. It, I mean, it was a great documentary, but it's a sad documentary because you get to find out, you know, her struggles, basically. And I'll just leave it at that. But if you guys could, please leave a like, subscribe, turn on bell notifications. And um, I'll leave my links to my social media as well as my PayPal, my Amazon wish list, in case you guys want to support in any way, shape, or form. Remember, you can support just by sharing my videos, liking my videos, doing my PayPal, doing my Amazon, whatever it may be. I'm thankful for it regardless. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Stay tuned. Thank you.